Hello and welcome to my June bullet journal setup. Here are all the things I'm going to be using in this video. And for the theme of this month, the main thing I'm going to be using are Crayola Super Tips, for both the greens and the purples. The reason for this is that this month's theme is going to be lavender. As you can see, I've already penciled out the design and I've done this for all the spreads. Then the pen I will be using is a black pigment liner in a 0.8 thickness and then I did get some spare pens out but don't think I ended up using any of them. So straight into the bullet journal. I'm going to speed this up. It took me around 40 minutes to do this in real time and I'm trying something different this month. I'm going to do a voiceover explaining as I go rather than just at the end. But if you do prefer just music, then feel free to mute the video and watch it with music of your own choosing. So I've just wrote out June at the top in that black pen. And to be honest, it's an old pen and some of the numbers have worn off. So when choosing it, I thought it said 0.3, not 0.8. But I think the thicker pen ended up working really well. For the theme of lavender, the drawings themselves were easy to do just time consuming due to the amount of dotting. I had tested it out beforehand and found that a thin line of green followed by using different shades of purple colours over the top gave me the look that I wanted. And I wouldn't call it realistic looking but I do think with the end result you can tell what it is and that's what I was going for. This is a similar technique to what I did for my April cherry blossom theme so I already felt confident in it. Then, the same as all my title pages, I add in a mini calendar. I find this easy to look at when flipping through, but the main reason I do it is because personally I just really like the look of it. Now, onto the June monthly view. Over time, I find the way that works best for me is to spread it over two pages, with each day being a 6x6 six six square grid. And the reason I really like this size is because I found that it fits all the types of planner and calendar stickers, or at least all of them that I've tried, which you will see in a moment, because I use a lot of them. <laughs> then to make the area where the day number is displayed more obvious this month, I've decided to just use a colourful circle, using two of the shades of purple that I've been using on the lavender which I do think also helps bring the theme in a little bit more. I also wanted to add that I do try and leave space around all of the grid for the calendar view, just because I find it more visually appealing. And there is always some way to add in a similar theme design to what has gone on on the title page for the month. Which you will see, I add in a smaller but similar lavender design into the bottom right hand corner. Again, using the darkest green for the stems and all of the shades of purple. However, I realised it was going to take a long time. So I did a little click between shots. So here is the before and here is the after. As you can see, I also used other shades of green to create some blades of grass, just because there were more of them at a lower level, I thought it made it look a bit better. Then adding in the title and the date numbers with that same black pen. Once the basics are done, I then go to the yearly view and add in any birthdays or events that are already scheduled, which for June was just two birthdays. Now onto the stickers. I use these rubbish and recycling stickers, which I will unfortunately run out of this month. I got these from Catnip on Etsy. However, when I last looked, they are no longer being sold. I then use these weight scales for weekly weigh-ins, which are again from Etsy, but are a digital download, so I can reprint and recut whenever I run out. Then lastly, I add in stickers for any cat things, which this month was worming and flea treatments. I made these stickers for myself and there are still some available on my Etsy. So now onto the tracker pages. 
I've got into the habit of being able to track three things. I would love to be able to track more, but honestly, if I try to do more than three, I don't keep on top of it. So here we go. I believe it's been for the last three months now that the things I've chosen to track are my mood, my productivity, and my workout slash weight. So starting with my mood and productivity, this month I've decided to use the lavender plant and use the purple parts to colour in. I often just use squares, but I felt like changing it up a bit, and you would not believe the amount of times I had to count to make sure that there were 30 little ovals here. I was so scared of like doing the incorrect number and just being left with a blank one at the end. So yeah, I used the lavender plant for this. And then I just used a varying shade of pink and purple as the key. I think once filled in at the end of the month, it should hopefully look really cool. Now over onto the workout and weight tracker. What I'm actually tracking here is every day in the month, what I've done. So if that's been, have I gone for a walk? Have I gone for a run? Have I done some yoga? Have I done an actual workout? And all I do is colour code it so each day I can colour in what I've done and kind of just see how active I've been. So for this I just do a monthly calendar layout using a 2 by 2 grid space for each square or day and then use the same colour felts for the key as I did on the mood and productivity page. Then at the bottom you will see I also stick some scale stickers. I wear myself once a week at the moment so I wanted somewhere I could see an overview. In the UK we've been in there a lockdown for over a year and I basically just want to get back on top of my weight again and back to being an active person again and not just sitting around all day. So this spread really helps me with that. Um, and yeah, it works for me, might not work for you, but for me, this spread is definitely one I really love using. So, yes. And then finally, to tie in the theme, I added a couple of lavender drawings just to frame the trackers. Now, my brain dump page. This is for anything and everything I need it to be, which normally ends up being many notes and many lists. So I decided to just keep it simple, draw one big lavender and write brain dump next to it. It's simple, but it does the job. So last but not least, I'm going to set up the first weekly spread for the month. I've been using this layout for a while now. I like to write my days out vertically, so I make them as long as I possibly can. So each day ends up being seven grid spaces wide and then just as long as I want to draw it. I usually do it all the way down to the bottom, leaving just one or two spaces free. And starting this month, I'm not doing my Saturday and Sundays all the way down to the bottom, as I want to start treating my weekends more like a weekend and not giving myself as much to do. I don't know how well that will actually go, as I'm sat here recording this voiceover on a Sunday, but we will see. I personally like to write in the day as well as the date to keep myself on track and then I'm just tying in the theme, adding in purple to the highlight the dates and then I'll also draw lavender in the extra space underneath the Saturday and the Sunday. I think this looks really nice and should hopefully be a real barrier to stop me writing more than I've left space for on these days. Once it's closer to June, I will do the same spread for the rest of the weeks. The reason I wait a bit is in case something comes up that needs considerably more or considerably less space than what I currently allocate. And if something does come up, I can change it around. And that is everything. So let's take a look at the final product. So here is the title page. I normally end up adding some sort of print to the blank page but I'm very happy with how this has turned out. Next, the monthly overview. I think you can really see here how it helps to have an overview. I can see my month laid out in front of me. And also, side note, I do go through and rub out the pencil lines. 
Uh, I didn't before recording the final product because I was not expecting them to show up so much on camera. Then the tracker page. I really like the look of this. It's really simple but really effective and I think the colours work really well here. Moving to the brain dump, it obviously looks very empty at the moment but as always I'm sure it will look very busy by the end of the month. And last but not least, the weekly spread. I've been using this layout since March and love it. I do wish it looked a bit nicer but for now it does the job and I love it. If you enjoyed the video please do give it a like, subscribe down below and I'll see you next time. Bye!